Hey guys, this is Dana, and this is video number 42 in the Red Flags of a Narcissist series. Video 42 is red flag number 42, which is guilt trips, pity ploys, and obligation. These seem to be three of the more popular ways that manipulative people go about manipulating their victims. And it seems to me that there's maybe two main reasons that they use these three things. And that has to be, or that has to do with as an excuse for their bad behavior or as an attempt at getting the victim to reopen communication with them. So in this, the reopening communication is also known as hoovering. And hoovering is a term that's named after the Hoover vacuum. And it's where a manipulative person will try to get the victim to reopen communication and so they can suck them back into that relationship. So how this all kind of goes down with guilt and pity and obligation is they might use religion and they might say, well, you know, nobody's perfect and I thought you were supposed to forgive and forget and treat others like you want to be treated and now you're, you're not going to forgive me for this. I, I can't believe this. I thought you were Christian or, um, you know, Jew, a good Jewish person or a good uh, Muslim and, and here we are or Buddhist or kind of what have you and, and now you're not forgiving me. You're not letting me back into the, your life and um, this is, so now it's, it's your fault, right? Or they might say something like, um, you know, it's their bad behavior that they, they hit you or yelled or, um, did something really over the top because really it's because they love you so much and they just have never felt this way about anybody before. And so their feelings just got the best of them because they, they just feel so intensely. Or it could be something like, because it's never their fault. There's never any true accountability there. It's always like your fault or the kid's fault or the work fault or the fault of an addiction or the other woman or man or kind of what have you. And so they might be saying something like, um, you know, I've got an addiction. I need to go to rehab. And so now the victim feels obligated to stay with them if they're going to actually finally try to get help. But then the reality is they might only be in rehab for a week or two. Again, there's no true insight gained. They, if anything, they just give uh, a lot of really great lip service to they, oh yes, they just have everything figured out. I mean, they've been in rehab for eight days and a hallelujah, they have everything figured out now. They are a changed person. And so again, now the victim's like, I don't know if that can really happen. That seems pretty quick. I mean, I don't know, but they're so they're so convincing. And then, of course, now once things start to settle in, then that bad behavior starts surfacing again. And if anything, the narcissist, it just gets better at hiding their bad behavior. Um, they might be using guilt or obligation or pity about their, the children. Uh, they might be trying to op reopen communication with the victim and saying something like, hey, uh, I was going to take the kids to go see Santa Claus this weekend. I thought it would be nice if you would come along too. And this, this way we can kind of show them, um, you know, that their parents still really love them. And so now the victim is feeling guilty. Like, well, I really don't want to do this. I don't want to have any connection with this person anymore, but I also don't want to hurt my kids. So I guess I'll go. Or they might think, um, the, the narcissist might try to reopen communication and say something like, hey, you know, um, I, I just found out that I have cancer or maybe that they have lupus or some sort of life altering or potentially terminal disease or disorder. I, I've got a heart condition or I think I might be having a heart attack or I'm suicidal. And so now the victim is thinking to themselves, oh no, I don't want this person to die or to be alone during all of this, but I, I don't really want them back in my life. But is that me being selfish? Like, am I being selfish if I don't want to, you know, to talk to them just because they have cancer doesn't mean that I, I want them back in my life. But I guess that that would make me a bad person because if I had cancer, I, I would want somebody to be there for me. And of course, you know, nine out of 10 times, none of this is even real. Or so they might say too, that either they have some sort of life threatening or life altering illness, or that somebody close to them, perhaps somebody that you like. So maybe it's like their mother or their daughter or their sister has this. And so then the victim feels like, okay, I need to, to reopen communication because I really do care about this other third person. And I want them to know that I care about them. Or again, with the whole suicide thing, that's kind of a, tends to be a last ditch effort for them to reopen communication. And 
So they might say, I'm really suicidal. Well, of course, too, with addiction or with suicide, any of that, the whole purpose of that tends to be, hey, you know, don't focus on all this bad behavior over here, focus on all this. And so now the victim's attention is now focused on putting out this fire. And so now all of their anger about their bad, this, the narcissist's previous bad behavior is diffused and this situation is no longer what's being dealt with. It's more of this urgent kind of stuff that's come up. But again, nine out of 10 times, none of this is even real. And of course, too, if a person is suicidal, the only thing that any of us can do is to call 911 and say, this person's suicidal, can you please go over there? Because if they're suicidal, you can't watch them, you know, 24 hours a day. They really need to be either in the hospital or other people need to know about it. That's too much pressure and obligation to put on one person to make you responsible for their life, for their safety. So just, just kind of know that. Um, they might, you know, be saying, oh, you know, acting like nothing happened. So you might have had this really big blow up and you're done. You're just absolutely done. And now they've texted you. Maybe you've left something at the house or they came across a, a photo album of you or the kids or what have you. And now they're being like really nice or again, acting kind of like nothing happened. And then now the victim's thinking, I must, am I overreacting? I mean, they're being nice. They, they want to give me this photo album and I don't quite know how to handle this. Or with pity, it might be something like, oh, they had a really rough inner city childhood or their parents used to beat them or their parents were, you know, again, somehow abusive or they didn't have, they weren't able to have the same privileges that the victim had. And so the victim is feeling, and they might be saying, well, you know, you don't even know how hard it is. And, uh, you know, you think this is bad between us. This, this ain't nothing. Like, you don't know how bad things were. I, when I grew up, my parents were so mean to me. And, you know, it takes, it's going to take time for me to unlearn all that. Like, I'm not like you. I, I didn't grow up, you know, with, with great parents. And see, you're so lucky. And so now the victim's feeling like, well, maybe this person really is trying to the best of their abilities. And, and maybe I need to stay with them and, and support them through this. And so, and here's kind of a way to tell if you're being manipulated. If you are always in a relationship, if what the pattern is, is you've got one person that has continually bad behavior and that you're the one that's always trying to fix them or fix their behavior, um, this is not an, a healthy relationship by any stretch. So, you know, that's kind of the whole codependency issue. A lot of codependent people tend to hang in there and they put their own needs on the back burner. So they really fall into that guilt and that obligation and that pity. And it's always putting somebody else first. So it's not a healthy dynamic. A healthy dynamic is something where it's empowering to me and it's empowering to you. If it has, if you're in a dynamic where Again, you're having to sacrifice your sanity, your safety, your pride, your dignity, these kinds of things in order to stay in that relationship, then there's something really, really wrong there. It's not healthy. So that's what I have for you for this red flag. I'll be really curious to see what you guys have to say and please comment down below and we will go from there. So as always, lots of love to you guys. You are not alone. You are not crazy and you really can heal from this. So take care and I will talk to you soon. Bye.